be two identical blades for uh, a guy and his friend that live in the United States. Uh, they sort of put in a joint order and this is going to be a fun build. They want some classy stuff done here and I'm excited to get started. Now after talking about some ideas with the client, this is the pattern we came up with. This is what meets his needs for style and use being a hunting and a woods knife, camping, different things like that. So you have that real nice deep belly and this big upper sweep here that makes this a beautiful hunting knife. But you also have some of the ergonomic features and stuff that will make it a good woods blade. And we're going to put a nice grind on there. This thing is going to get all the luxury features. What you see right here is going to be some brass. So we're going to get started right now by tracing this blade out on some steel. I'm going to use some blue dicum on this steel. Now, dicum is like a really intense dye. It's used a lot for steel workers or by steel workers and fabricators because it gives you a nice surface once dry that you can draw and mark on and create precise measurements. And just a plain steel surface is a little bit tough to mark on. I'm really not sure why it went all uneven and funky like this. It doesn't usually. Usually it's just a beautiful clean dark blue finish, but that won't affect it. What it does, it gives you a nice chalky surface that you can actually mark on. So I'm just going to use a mechanical pencil here now and start tracing this out. Regardless, it won't affect our layout. What we can do now is I'll just use this little punch here, this little cold punch. Just lightly scribe a perimeter and you'll see it really well through this dicum. So now you can see how we have that nice sharp line and compared to with a marker you have a really wide line. It's hard to get a precise measurement. Now we just have smaller than a mechanical pencil line so we can go ahead and cut this out. Now I cut out all my knife patterns along with any other fab work I do, which is not a ton, but any other fab work with this Milwaukee, this is a porta band or a portable band saw. If you want a good gift for someone in your life, a good Christmas gift, because they aren't real cheap. You're looking at close to 400 bucks for one of these, but uh, they are amazing tools for fab work. It's uh, You've got a nice half inch or more depth to the blade there and you can just cut through steel like butter. It's beautiful. Cut out the nice little crevices. A long time I did like an angle grinder with cut off wheels but it's just so messy and, and imprecise. With a tool like this you could just do such beautiful work. Now just a quick note after me mentioning how beautiful this tool is, and it is an amazing tool. You saw there, I just had a blade come off. What happened was a little small cut of steel uh, went down, jammed between the rollers, and just ripped this, ripped this saw blade right out of the saw. Now the saw spun, or the blade spun, came up and smacked me in the face. Didn't hurt my face, I had those nice goggles on. Let me show you guys here. You can see these are teeth marks from the bandsaw blade right over where my eye would be. So I just want to make the point, make sure you wear your PPE. I never start a machine like this or any type of belt grinder or the bench grinder or anything without eyeglasses on. It's so important that just, just a little bit of cutting like that, I just got started. You could say, you know, I just wanted to make one quick cut, but just one slip like that 
and uh, could have could have doubted one of my eyes, could have spoiled one of my eyes. You only get one set, in case you didn't know. So, just a reminder that just every once in a while you need a little something like that to happen, just to further instill in you that you know it is really important that you wear that protection all the time. Something else. A lot of people don't consider and this is a big thing in Newfoundland it doesn't seem like Newfoundlanders are, are the most uh, I don't want to use the word responsible but that's what seems fitting the most caring when it comes to protection I know a lot of times when I was growing up using tools and stuff ah it's not a big deal right but I don't do anything without ear protection and um, and I know so many old guys around here I know PPE wasn't as common back in the day, but they just they do stuff without wearing ear protection And I want my ears to work when I'm an old man. I don't want to be the old guy yelling Yelling to for people everyone to repeat what they're saying But ear protection so easy so light comfortable and like this machine here screams And it's just nice to put these on you, there's no headache You don't have the kind of grimace because of the noise you're just nice and comfortable with your gear on so it just, it's just easy to take the extra minute throw on the goggles throw on the muffs and you're super comfortable when working I'm giving you guys all the tips today now I'm about to do some grinding on the knives and what I would recommend you picking up even if it's not your work even if you're just a home hobbyist because that's the focus of this episode here is pick up some of these you can order these on Amazon I think these are like a pioneer brand or something but they're just like, almost like a, a paper canvasy type material of disposable coveralls they're like six or seven bucks six or eight bucks and uh, they really help keep you clean when grinding yeah I just saw the labels right here pioneer brand but these zip up they're easy to put on and they do up right to here so especially like how nice would these be if you're putting in a bit of attic insulation or something like that put on a respirator and some gloves and, and your, all your clothes are sealed in uh, like I said steel grinding like this or woodworking you don't want to get your clothes full of sawdust it's just nice you can come to the shop in half decent clothes and when you leave you can still you can rip these off and still get in the truck or whatever and not worry about getting dust everywhere so highly recommended Took me a while to learn this was a an affordable option out there, but now I always have them in stock. people don't think about or don't think about existing or being available is a die grinder now this is just a cheapo one a mastercraft from Canadian tire got this one on sale for I believe it was $49.99 which is which is pretty cheap and then you get a nice burr bit but if you have to cut any radiuses radii radii maybe if you have to cut any rounds any concaves uh, this is a beautiful way because you can't get in there with a belt grinder these bits like a good burr bit like this cylindrical burr bit You can really cut nice radiuses Quickly you can really hog out some steel and then we'll uh, use like a drum sander to smooth it out to a real clean finish This one being a cheap mastercraft doesn't have like any variable speed or anything that would be nice But it does get the job done and it gets it done fast and for a cheap price Now check out these two beautiful blade blanks and here's where things really start to get interesting and fun this is fun work here now so we have a solid piece of quarter inch solid brass bar just beautiful stuff and these knives are getting bolsters that go right here so we're gonna have to cut out what I what I like to do is like a lap or a scissor joint for brass like this because it stops it from being able to rock or or move or anything like that but what I'm gonna do because I, I want to grind in those bevels first what I'm gonna do is just lay that there mark out 
how far forward that brass is going to end up coming. Just like that. And I know our bevels have to stop ahead of that line. Now understanding blade geometry is very important to understanding what makes a good knife. What's a knife going to be used for? How much steel do you have there to work with? And once you combine those types of things, you can start looking at what type of grind the client might need on a knife, what type of grind would look best with the pattern, and what type of grind uh, the steel can hold up to. This is 1 8 inch 01. So I can throw pretty much any grind on here and it would work. 01 is a really tough steel, so uh, when it's hardened and treated, of course. So we, it, the, the knife itself can handle almost any grind. Now what's going to be serviceable, what's going to look good? We're doing a complete polish on this knife, that's what the client wants. I'm thinking a full convex. So pretty much spine to bevel, we're going to have one sweep. So there's not going to be a, a geometry change, it's going to be one continuous uh, sweep in this dimension, okay, so it's going to taper in to the bevel. That's what will look best polished. I think it will really suit this knife well. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Paul'sFinest.com. Noble's Timber Mart with locations in Springdale and Bay Vert. WildMedKids.ca Robinson's General Store, located in Middle Arm, and ABS Bussing, also located in Middle Arm, Newfoundland. After a lot of grinding, we have these two blades right here and they're looking good I worked them up to a 220 grit on the belt and now I'll start hand sanding and I'm only gonna hand sand them I'm gonna start off with a 180 grit and we're gonna sand and remove some of those belt grinder striations sand all the flats work the flats into the bevels here just feels like a beautiful gradient into that convex but once we have that 180 done We'll do our stamping drill or tang holes and we're ready for heat treat. We don't want to work up any higher than say a 180 grit or so before heat treat because heat treat l produces a lot more scratches. So if you sand up to say a 600 grit, you're going to have to go back down to 180 again anyways after heat treat. Now hand sanding like this is by far the most unenjoyable part of the process of making a knife, but it is when you get to see your knife actually come to life. But that hand sanding is done and look how clean those blades are. 120 grit. Now we've got to get to working on that brass work which is certainly the most custom and intricate part of this project. So what we're getting is a brass bolster that's going to overlay something like that. Now we have quarter inch thick. This is a beautiful brass bar here. I, I use quite a bit of this but this is really nice. But what we need to create is like a lap joint. So here's where order of operations get tough. Do you want to cut the lap in here first? Or do you want to cut the joint here? I don't think it matters that much. I'm going to go ahead and cut close to a quarter inch slot right here on the bandsaw. Uh, quarter inch wide by however deep I want. That doesn't matter. Uh, but if I cut a quarter inch slot, then we can go ahead and mark out this piece of brass and get to work on that. So we don't want to cut out a full quarter inch thick there now because if we do we won't have any room to file out and fit and finish and clean it up. So we'll get close to a quarter inch notch and uh, and then we'll work it out the rest of the ways with a file. And now comes the precision fitting, 
and that is to widen this out and clean it up so it perfectly fits our our brass insert here Now I found whether you're woodworking, metalworking, just precise work, even work around the house, a good set of files is indispensable. And of course you can get files to file almost anything. And just files are so useful. So I would recommend having a nice extensive set right down to little small needle files, which are useful for gunsmithing and, uh, and precise fitting work like this. Uh, machining work right up to big super coarse rasps that you would use for filing in axe handles or or concaves on furniture and things like that and now for a beautiful part let's see of course we've been test fitting this as it's been going but let's have a look at this lap joint here and we have a brass lap joint and once we grind this flush, after it's all done, of course, you will just have a beautiful finish there. Let's try the other one. And there we have it, number two. And notice that this piece of brass now can't rotate forward. Um, the only thing it can do is pull back off of there. So how we'll fix that, and this is a very tedious part, you need to get things accurate. We're going to put a pin straight through, all the way through out the other side. Pin on both ends. That's going to be nice, but you're getting an idea now of the size and scale of this knife. It's just... Uh, just lovely. This is a 1 16th bit. Nice and soft through the brass. We'll hear when it hits that 01. There it is. to the brass. Now the scary part this is to turn this over and to see where we came out through the other side. <laughs> pretty well dead center and we have a hole straight through the tang of that blade so now when that pin goes through there this this brass plate is never coming off little step before heat treat and that is to mark my work it's important to mark your work I've uh, I've felt that way since I've been older and I've been a craftsman for two main reasons one if your work is excellent lets people know that you're capable of doing excellent work which can be can be valuable to people. And two, 
in case your work is a little bit a little bit sketchy or inconsistent it gives you some accountability when your name is going on it, it has to be good you can't put out low quality work then because once these blades are heat treated it will always be known that this is Kyle knows where these work so if the fit and finish isn't just right then that reflects on me as a craftsman now we're ready for the forge now steel heat treating can be very difficult to get right essentially what you have is when you order a piece of steel the steel steel comes annealed which is in a softest state and for for this steel here 01 it's like mid 20s on the Rockwell hardness Rockwell hardness test what I want to get and our oil quench here is up to low 60s and then we want to temper it back down to high 50s so that's going to be the goal here today um, as you're heating this knife up when it reaches a certain temperature um, it's kind of prime time you want to quench it then your oil should be a certain temperature this is an oil quench steel it, there's a whole lot to it too much to get into for this episode but uh, every steel sort of has its own recipe how to get certain characteristics out of it uh, this knife doesn't want to be too hard doesn't want to be too brittle and it doesn't want to be too soft either because of course then it won't hold an edge so it's a little bit tough to get it right I think I've done a good job so far. I've had a few mistakes along the way. I've messed up some blades, but i uh, not planning on doing that today. I'm using a propane forge here. Some people use electric ovens. Uh, that might be somewhere I might progress to in the future. Coal is also, that's an, that's an older style, and it takes a little more work and maintenance of coal forge. I started out with a coal forge, and it's definitely fun to try it that way, but uh, propane has been a convenient switch for me. After tempering this is what we're left with some beautifully hard if our recipe was right these should be right in around 58 59 on the Rockwell hardness scale which is a beautifully hardened blade you can tell how different the blades sound there now they have this beautiful this beautiful finish on them now comes the tiring part now we have hand sanding which is a lot of work if you're mirror polishing a blade it takes a lot of work if you've done everything right and things have worked out well in your favor we sand it up to 180 grit before heat treat if we didn't have too much decarburization or too much martensite form on the surface of this blade it shouldn't take too long to get it back to where we had it before heat treat so you might as well buckle in I'll probably be here till till uh, next season so I hope you guys have a good winter it shouldn't be that long I figure uh, maybe a couple hours of hand sanding and we'll be there that's it for this episode I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode I'm gonna be working make sure you guys tune in next week to see the rest of this build thank you guys for watching a big shout out to the sponsors who support the show and make it possible. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure you tune in next week to the Newfoundland Hobbyists.
The following program is brought to you by Rogers Anyplace TV. Enjoy exclusive.